In this video, we will see the mind-blowing truth of who God is and how this ancient symbol proves what God has done for us and a serious warning of how the Antichrist directly mirrors and counterfeits Jesus Christ in order to deceive people. Well, hello folks, I hope you're all well. Now, this video today, I feel is really important because we're gonna see just how true the Lord Jesus Christ is and just how closely the Antichrist counterfeits and copies God. Because this is the pinnacle of truth, this is the battleground the truth of the gospel versus the counterfeit Luciferian New Age. This is where we see the real spiritual battleground. And I'll do this quite simply using the Bible, using ancient Hebrew pictographs and the symbolism that we see in our culture today. And I hope you stick with me because I know for many of you watching this, this information, this truth will strengthen your faith and your discernment and maybe for others of you who, who don't know Jesus Christ, this will show you that he's the truth and that through this I hope that you find faith in him. Now to lay the groundwork for this video, let's start here. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. These are the words of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation. So he says he is the Alpha and the Omega. The Alpha and the Omega, which you may have seen before, are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. So the beginning and the end. And that is what Jesus is describing himself as. He's declaring himself as God, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is a reference to Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. He's the first. And then we go to John 8.58. Jesus says to the Jewish leaders, Before Abraham was, I am. He's describing himself as being in the beginning. So Jesus is the first. He is the Alpha. He is begotten, not created. And of course, today we know the word Alpha as being like the Alpha male, for example, like the, the head, the leader. So then we take this concept of using the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet to describe Jesus, and we convert it to ancient Hebrew. In Isaiah chapter 44, Verse 6 is exactly the same concept. It says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. God says, I am the first and the last. So what does that translate to in the Hebrew alphabet? The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Aleph. And the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Tav, the first and the last letters, the Aleph and the Tav. So Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, and he is the Aleph and the Tav. Now, the earliest form of the Hebrew alphabet was written as pictures or pictographs. They used to have pictures to denote the various letters. And so when you look at the uh, pictograph for Aleph, you find it's the ox head or a head with horns. And if you look into this yourself, you can see that this is where our letter A came from. For example, the ox head morphed into the letter A. So you see that that represents the first, the first letter, the bull, the ox. Now, this symbol represents strength, it represents power, it represents authority, it represents the head of a family. 
So this is who God is. Jesus is our head. He's our federal head. As Christians, he's the head of the church. He's the head of the bride. He's the head of the house. And so it denotes that strength and that authority. And then you look at the pictograph for the Tav, and lo and behold, it's a cross. It's a cross, around a thousand years before Christ. And the ancient Hebrew letter here for Tav was a cross. So the Aleph and the Tav, God is the first and the last in the Hebrew language. And of course, Jesus went to the cross. God was showing us thousands of years before crucifixion was even invented that his plan was for Christ to come and to die on the cross for our sins. The strong was sacrificed for the weak. He went willingly to the cross, yet he is God Almighty, yet he is the first, yet he is the head. He laid down his life and he humbled himself. And you look into the symbol of the tav for the cross and that's related to the covenant. It's related to a sign. It's related to a mark. So you have the covenant. You know, Jesus came to bring the new covenant of his blood. The New Testament means the new covenant. So that is a covenant, that cross sign. And amazing, isn't it, that that cross it goes back to the very early pictographs of hebrew once again the the signs that it would be jesus christ himself even in the ancient hebrew languages The two sticks that were crossed over for the ancient Hebrew sign of the pictograph of the covenant that represents covenant, the two sticks that were crossed over together, and then it doesn't take much, does it, to to just do this. And there you have the sign of the cross that Jesus Christ died on, the, the Tav sign. When this ancient Hebrew symbol was used in the pictograph, you know, back in the ancient Hebrew, that the, the, the method of crucifixion did not exist. Crucifixion was not a method of killing that came into, after, into that afterwards and which the Romans used. So this already was showing back in ancient Hebrew that this would be the sign of the covenant between God and his people and that he would come down and die for our sins. The strong leader, the head of the ox, uh, he would die on the cross, on the tav, the wooden sticks that were crossed over as a sign of the covenant. It was already showing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and that he would come and die for our sins to bring us into a, a new covenant with our creator. You can go through and see how Jesus was always the one. He was always shown to be the the coming Messiah. And we'll go on in a second to show how the Antichrist is the direct inversion of this. It's just mind-blowing, the truth of, of the Bible. It's just so true. It's so rich. It's so authentic. The truth of the Bible holds up no matter what scrutiny you give it. And that's exciting. So that's what Jesus is represented as. He's the head of the church. He's the head of the family of God. He is the beginning. He is sovereign in the same way that the man is the head of the household, the husband, the head of the wife. And this also can be why you see the symbolism of the woman riding the ox in the Commonwealth Games. This represents the false religion or Jezebel taking illegitimate authority over the male, the female taking the seat of authority over the man, and the apostate church, the 
female pastors and things that obviously go against the masculine language of the Bible. And she, in this scene, is taking the place of the Alpha, uh, which is contrary to God's design of Christ as the head, the husband, the head of the wife, the wife, the head of the children. So, the primary fulfillment of this is seen in Revelation chapter 17, and is that woman riding the beast, which is the apostate church, ecclesiastical Babylon, the Jezebel church, riding on the back of the beast confederation. And at some point in that prophecy, she is judged. She's stripped naked, she's burnt with fire, and her flesh is eaten. And remember Jezebel in the Old Testament, she lured Israel in to worship false gods. And as part of her punishment, she was eaten, her, her flesh was eaten by dogs. And that is the fate of this whore of Babylon. So Jesus, God the Son, he went to the cross for our sins. And that's why the last letter there is a shape of a cross. So you can re render it, Jesus, the strength and power who went to the cross for our sins. You see both depicted here in the Jägermeister logo. In this logo, you have a depiction of both the real Christ and the Antichrist in the same image. That's how closely the enemy copies. Just very simply, you have here just what we said. You have the Aleph and you have the Tav. You have the, the horned head, which represents that ox bull figure, and you have the cross. And so when you think about the Antichrist who claims to be God himself, because that's what the Bible says, he will claim to be as God, that you have this Alpha, which is what the man of sin will claim to be. He will claim to be God himself. He will be given authority and power for a time, for a short time, leads this beast confederation across the world. He comes proclaiming himself to be God, almost to be the father, the bull, the bull counterfeit. Remember the Israelites worshipped the counterfeit idol, the golden bull, the golden idol in the wilderness. And we see Baal and the horned God and all of these things, they're, they're all counterfeits of that. They're all counterfeits and inversions of God. And then we see in this Jägermeister logo, we see the cross, which of course we said before, the Tav, it also represents covenant. It also represents a mark. It also represents a sign. So think about it this way. You've got the counterfeit God, the Antichrist who comes, and he brings with him a mark, the mark of the beast. And he brings with him a false covenant, a covenant that is made prophet in prophecy that you know with Israel and the peace deal and the false peace and the lying signs and wonders. These are all patterned after the true God. It's all a copy of the true God. And you can see it's just so simple, isn't it? When you look back into the ancient Hebrew and the pictographs, you can see how close the counterfeit is, the Antichrist is, to the real God, and all it is is just a an inversion and a copy, and a judgment upon those who follow deception and reject the gospel. God is sovereign, God writes the scripture, God knows what's going to happen, and we can trust God that he is the one who is in authority and power, that the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. And that's what's happening here. We can see from this that God is the one in control. Greater is he that's in us than in the world. And so, the cross of Jesus Christ is the great equaliser. Rich or poor, free or bond, you all come on a level playing field to Jesus Christ. No one is better than anyone else. Everyone is a sinner. Everyone is equally deserving of God's wrath and hell fire. But 
Christ saves all who would come on that equal playing field. He will save whoever comes to him in repentance and faith. But then you look at the Antichrist and the, the beast and the mark of the beast and the man of sin. He brings a mark, which is also a great equaliser. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that all, whether rich or poor, free or bond, they all come and take the mark of the beast. They make a covenant with the beast. So what's it going to be? And that's the question. You only have two choices. There's no sitting on the fence with this. It's either you join the new covenant of Christ's blood shed at the cross for your sins, or you make a covenant with the beast. And it doesn't matter whether you're alive uh, when the, the actual final pinnacle of the mark of the beast comes out. If you die in your sin now, you will die allied with the devil. You will die within Satan's kingdom. You will die in your sins. Your sins are not going to be paid for if you make a covenant with the beast. You're going to be condemned to hell forever, which is what the Bible says. But if you come and make a covenant with the Lord God before you die, then you will be saved. You will be marked by God. You will be sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. You'll be born again. You'll be made a new creation you'll be rescued. So just like the cross of Christ is given as a covenant between the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob with his children, the mark of the beast is a sign of a covenant between the Antichrist and those destined for destruction. Jesus Christ came with true miracles, signs and wonders. The Antichrist, the son of perdition, comes with lying signs and wonders to deceive people. The true Jesus Christ leads to heaven and redemption and salvation from your sins. The Antichrist, the beast, brings only hell, rebellion against God, and leads to judgment and condemnation forever. Thank you for listening to this, guys, and I'll, I'll be coming back soon with a new video to explore some of these concepts further. God bless.